G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. As we know, water flow is particularly important in a reef aquarium. Typically, we use a variety of wave makers which drop into the tank, attach the glass with magnets and push water around creating the natural reef water flow currents. But today, we're gonna to look at a tank which has a different system for water movement. So here we are in front of Epic Tank number three. You may remember this tank from our series, Epic Tanks and why they work. And also the last time we were here, we were removing massive amounts of Halometer as a nutrient export system. Now the Halometer has grown back and we do continue to prune it from time to time. It's a little bit overgrown at the moment. But what is interesting about this tank is the type of water flow. Now we'll have a look at the tank and see if you can spot the water flow devices. So you may have noticed that we don't have big bulky wave makers. Typically we would have wave makers which are up the top of the tank that would stand off the glass and would be quite obvious to look at in the tank. You may have seen the return stem at the top of the tank. Now interestingly the return line is not the main source of water movement in this tank. To see the main source of water movement in this tank we need to look underneath the tank. Let's check it out. So here we are under the tank and what we have for our water flow for this 3000 litre tank is a closed loop circuit. Now a closed loop circuit is effectively a pump with plumbing that runs to the tank to, to draw water from the tank to the pump and then back into the tank again. So we'll have a look up the top and we'll show you where they come in, where the water comes in and out of. But first of all, let's look at the plumbing under the tank. Two are for the intake and four are for the outlet. Each of these lines has got a valve so we can control the flow. And this is one intake and this is the other. Drawing in through a common into the pump through here and then up and the outlet goes to the four different points. This is a very discreet system and with our 30,000 litre an hour pump, it's a very strong source of water flow. Let's have a look up the top and we'll see if we can show you exactly where the water comes into the pump and gets sent back to the tank. So this is one of the outlets and you can see that there's lock line and it's actually the one outlet is split into two. And so this allows us to angle the flow to best spread the water around the tank. Now there are four of these twin outlets which gives us eight nozzles in total to be able to really direct the flow around this 3,000 litre tank. Let's see if we can find the intakes. Now the intakes are particularly difficult to see and there's one behind this large Giardini coral and it's effectively a basket strainer which stops fish, uh, corals, and sand and such being sucked into the pump. But it does look like it's a little bit clogged. So one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to try and clear the debris off the basket strainers. So that's the first one and the second one is over here. This one's a little bit easier to see. And you may be able to see, it just looks like there's some bits of sand, maybe some halometer, things like that, blocking that strainer. And with the blockages on both these basket strainers, on the intake to our closed loop circuit, this will be slowing down the flow slightly. So occasionally, every three or six months, we just do a bit of a service on this closed loop circuit, and that's what we're gonna to do today. So 
So this tank is over three feet tall. It's a particularly deep tank and also given the width, it's very difficult to reach the bottom of the tank. So what I'm going to do before I try and service the closed loop circuit and reach those bask strainers, I'm going to drop the water down a little bit just so it's easier to reach into the tank. So I'm doing a gravel vac and draining the water at the same time. Then I'll turn the return pump off and see if I can reach it. One of the great things about this tank, when it was designed, it was designed with a drain directly under the tank. So it makes it so easy to drain water out of this tank. We just hook up the gravel siphon straight down into the pipe, easy. Just been downstairs to the filter room and I've turned the return pump off. So now the only water movement in the tank is the closed loop circuit. And before I do any work on the basket strainers, I'm gonna turn it off. Very easy, just the one pump to turn off. And now, let's see if I can reach. Ah, here we go. So I can only just reach, ah, and there's an anemone stinging my arm. I've got some cuts on my arm and with that anemone right there, he's just getting right into it. And so difficult to, to unthread this basket strainer, but I really want to take it out of the tank so I can ensure that it's thoroughly cleaned. All right. At least it's threading out. Of course, it's really important to turn off the pump at this point so you don't suck stuff into the pump. Anyway, I think I'm almost there. Ah, there we go, got it. So you can see it's fairly blocked. Probably not quite as bad as I thought it was. Just grab a bucket and we'll give it a bit of a clean. So I'm just using a toothbrush from the inside and just punching out these little stones, of bits of coral sand, which are clogging the intake. From the looks of it, the other one is the worst one of the two. This one's not too bad. And uh, I think this one will be the easiest to get back into the tank. Because we're dealing with the intake to the pump, it's not really under pressure of coming off. So this is why this section wasn't glued in place. And it was easier just to pull it out rather than unthread the basket strainer. It is gonna make it more difficult to get this back in place because I have to ensure that it goes in without any sand uh, blocking it and jarring it. So. Just have to line it up perfectly. Okay, done. The reason why we've had this issue with the basket strainers clogging is because there's a colony of zebra gobies in this tank. Now these zebra gobies move the sand around and they've been depositing it on top of this intake. So I'm just gonna clear the sand with my scraper and try and get as uh, much clearance around this basket strainer as possible. Then I'll do the other side and then we'll be done. Mm -hmm. 
So let's turn this closed loop back on. Here we go. And you can see there was a bit of sand that went down into the intake strainer. Now hopefully we've got much stronger flow and definitely by the looks of it, this is gonna be a million times better. So now we have our closed loop circuit turned back on. The water's pumping better than ever. We've got our basket strainers both clean and I did have to really reach into the tank and I'm absolutely soaked part of the job but I was actually prepared to go deeper. So I'm happy with what we've done today. Now we're just going to stop the tank draining, go downstairs and fill it back up. So here we are downstairs in the filter room and for such a massive tank, we've got a massive sump filter. Now we've had the return pump, which is this one here, turned off whilst we serviced the closed loop circuit upstairs. So we have to turn it back on and at the same time, we're going to pump natural seawater from our storage containers into the sump because we did drain out a few hundred litres upstairs. So I'll get this ready first. This will be good to go. I'm going to turn on the return over here first. back up. So why would we use a closed loop circuit instead of, instead of traditional wave makers? Now one of the reason on the tank upstairs is because of the fact that it's such a big system that we need to push a lot of water around the tank. But the other reason is because the tank itself is hard up against the wall. So we don't have a space behind the tank for magnets for traditional wave makers. But as you can see upstairs, it's a very effective form of water movement. It's very easy to maintain. And most importantly, it's a very discreet system. So I hope that uh, you've been able to learn something about closed loop circuits. And in future, we'll show you other types of water flow, like your traditional wave makers. But anyway, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.